Welcome to another Chalkboard Talk on Adult Attachment and Health. This time we look at the links between close relationships and three aspects of health. Worrying about health, experiencing symptoms, and going to the doctor. I'm John Hunter and this video is brought to you by me and my colleague Bob Maunder. Attachment theory is so useful because it's normal psychology. We all suffer from these insecurities. We start where our introductory video ended. We describe two sources of feeling insecure. The first was feeling insecure about being alone, which is called attachment anxiety. The second is being insecure about being too close to people, which is called attachment avoidance. Those two basic forces result in four patterns of attachment. Secure describes people whose insecurity is mild and who find it easy to engage in relationships where reciprocity is valued and where it is safe to stand alone or to depend on others. Fear of being alone is the major force behind the support-seeking style. People with this pattern express distress readily and prefer to stay very close to a loved one. In the self-reliant pattern, the strongest force is discomfort with being too close or dependent. In this style, expressions of distress are suppressed and autonomy is preferred at almost any cost. Finally, the fearful or cautious pattern emerges from the combination of strong feelings of both attachment anxiety and attachment avoidance. This leads to a reluctance to seek help or depend on others while still feeling unable to manage alone. It's easy for people to understand how attachment style affects romantic relationships but people are still very surprised to learn how strongly attachment style is linked to health and health outcomes. Now let's talk about how these patterns of handling close relationships affect our health. We can start with the secure pattern. People with this style tend to have a fairly realistic view of the stresses and threats that they are facing, as well as a good understanding of their own resilience or vulnerability. They have the internal resources to manage a fair amount of stress and can turn to their loved ones for extra support when they need it. Those interpersonal characteristics have a direct impact on health. A secure person does not worry excessively about their health. Their concerns tend to be in proportion to the actual severity of health problems. Similarly, a balanced view of personal vulnerability means that a secure person doesn't need to be overly focused on any danger signals from his or her body. Physical symptoms tend to be connected to illness and injury in a fairly straightforward way. A secure person usually approaches a healthcare professional as an expert, not unlike the way they approach a car mechanic or an airline pilot, important for the matters that lie in their domain, but not necessary for any other interpersonal function. Let's contrast that picture with the way things are for someone with a support-seeking or preoccupied style. The important characteristics of this interpersonal style are an exaggerated fear of threats from the environment, a tendency to devalue one's own resources to respond, and a resulting preference to seek support frequently. In the context of health, a person with a support-seeking style tends to worry about health more than seems justified by their physical health problems. Because they are often vigilant for even subtle signs of new threats, people with a support-seeking style experience physical symptoms more often. Symptoms are not a reliable indicator of illness or injury. Finally, seeking reassurance and support in a health context means visiting the doctor, getting tests and often receiving some sort of treatment. So, people with a support-seeking style tend to use a lot of healthcare resources. How does this contrast with the self-reliant style? The core characteristics of the self-reliant style are a preference for interpersonal distance and an emphasis on maintaining the appearance of needing no help, looking as if all is fine under any circumstances. This style relies heavily on suppressing signals of distress. It is often hard to know if a self-reliant person actually feels unperturbed or whether they are merely very good at masking trouble. In a health or medical context, these characteristics lead self-reliant individuals to express little worry about their health, even if there is some reason that they should be concerned. Symptoms are underreported, 
making it harder to know if they are suffering from a serious illness or injury, and health care tends to be avoided whenever possible. It's harder to predict how fearful attachment affects health because fearful attachment involves conflicting forces. Attachment avoidance pushes for emotional suppression and interpersonal distance, while attachment anxiety drives an intense sense of personal vulnerability and concern. Let's look at what the evidence said. First, we can look at how attachment affects symptoms. We are relying here on research that was done by Paul Chianowski and his colleagues in Seattle. In this bar graph, the higher the bar, the more symptoms are reported by people in each of our four groups. We are looking at all the physical symptoms a person acknowledges at the time we ask them the question, whatever they may be, headaches, coughs, an upset stomach, anything at all. If we assume that people with a secure style report symptoms as a direct response to illness and injury, then we can contrast the other three styles. Just as we expect, support-seeking attachment leads to experiencing and reporting symptoms out of proportion to illness and injury. And, just as we expect, self-reliant attachment is associated with under-reporting. Needless to say, both over-reporting and under-reporting symptoms can lead to health problems. But what happens with the fearful style? It turns out that people with the fearful style experience the highest level of symptoms of all. In this case, the sense of personal vulnerability and threat seems to win out over the forces of suppression. How about using healthcare resources? This is a question that has big implications, not only for personal health, but also for healthcare costs. Drawing from another study by Paul Chianowski, we find that once again, if we take the degree to which people with a secure style use healthcare resources as the standard, then just as predicted, people with a support-seeking style tend to overuse resources, and people with a self-reliant style tend to underuse them. Neither of those patterns is good for health. And what happens with the fearful style? In this case, it is the reluctance to seek support and care from other people that wins out. People with the fearful style have the least healthcare utilization of all. The contrast between experiencing symptoms and seeking help in the fearful style is striking. These people suffer the most and yet get the least help. Now let's look at worry about health, which is sometimes called health anxiety. This refers to things like believing that you have a serious disease, having trouble being reassured, and being sensitive and bothered by the way others talk about it. We are drawing from the reports of people who have participated in our own research at Mount Sinai Hospital in Toronto for this example. We can contrast the degree of health anxiety experienced by people who are healthy, which is pretty modest, to the degree of health anxiety experienced by people with a chronic disease, which is a little higher even if the disease is in remission, but is quite a bit higher when the disease is active. So far, so good. Health anxiety is related to the degree of health problems that people are experiencing. What happens when we introduce attachment into the mix? In this case, we need only look at attachment anxiety because that is the driving force behind health anxiety. Attachment avoidance is not so important in this case. The contrast that we just described holds true for people who experience low levels of attachment anxiety as occurs in the secure style. If we look at higher levels of attachment anxiety, things change a bit. First, look at people who are basically healthy. Moderate levels of attachment anxiety don't seem to have much impact on health anxiety. But at high levels of attachment anxiety, health anxiety is higher, even when a person is healthy. High health anxiety in the absence of illness is known as hypochondriasis. For people who have something to worry about because they have a chronic illness, this effect is amplified. The combination of actual illness experience plus attachment anxiety is potent, and health anxiety rises markedly. Note that for people with chronic disease, a person with high attachment anxiety whose disease is in remission may actually experience more health anxiety than a more securely attached person who is experiencing active disease. Attachment anxiety can be a very strong force indeed. 
So we have seen how our insecurities about close relationships are related to symptoms, to worry about health, and to using medical resources. And that brings us to the close of this chalkboard talk. Stay tuned for more videos exploring other aspects of the many links between close relationships and health.